Thousands of Californians awoke in the dark today as the state's largest utility began shutting down power lines. In total, more than a million people in the northern part of the state could be affected by the mass shutoffs. The rolling blackouts come as weather forecasters warn low humidity mixed with the most powerful winds of the year could fuel the already devastating wildfire season. So for more on this, we want to bring in CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. Um, so Jeff, what's going on? Some forecasters with the National Weather Service warned that some areas are going to see the strongest winds of the year today. How are things faring and when can people, you know, maybe expect their power to return? Yeah, so there's bad news and there's good news. The bad news is the winds are just as strong as we expected them to be. We've seen wind gusts over 100 miles an hour. I'll show you that in just a couple of seconds. Uh, but the good news is it's not going to last very long. I think probably by later tomorrow and tomorrow night, we'll start to see uh, the winds begin to subside, and that's when the power will be restored at the latest, probably Wednesday morning. But take a look at this graphic here to show you some of the winds. Kirkwood Mountain. Now, this is up in the mountains, way up in elevation, 9,000 feet or so uh, in uh, the north part of California around the Sierra Nevada, 131 mile an hour wind gust. Now, this right here, Middletown and uh, St. Helena, not in the Sierra Nevada. These are in wine country, but the hills, the hills of wine. You always get stronger winds in the hills. Uh, Middletown, 89 mile an hour wind gust. St. Helena, around 82 miles an hour. But on the ground, you know, near the surface in Oakland, we've seen a wind gust close to 60 miles an hour, which is tropical storm force wind gusts. That's Northern California. Southern California, and the strongest winds again confined to the hills because, you know, it, the winds are stronger as you go up in the atmosphere. But also, if you're in a canyon area, the wind is kind of squeezing through. It accelerates kind of like a, a tube of toothpaste. When you when you put pressure on it, it squeezes out, right? That's kind of what happens with the wind. And so the Santa Clarita Hills winds uh, 85 miles an hour so far, the strongest wind gust and a 61 mile an hour wind gust right there. OK, so during the day today, this is where the worst fire risk is. Now, this is a four out of five on the scale. So this is, you know, certainly extreme fire danger, but the worst of it actually today is in Southern California, right in and around the hills uh, and mountains of Los Angeles. That pink shading right there is very rare. We see the National Weather Service issue that, you know, once every couple of months or so. By the time, by the way, the last time we saw this pink shading uh, was September in Oregon. And we knew that it was going to be bad, and, and it turned out to be a devastating situation. In 24 hours, towns were leveled by the fires. And so that's why we worry so much about this extremely critical fire danger. And one more note, you know, a lot of folks who may not be getting the strongest winds, who aren't in the hills, who aren't in the canyons, they may be only seeing winds of 30 or 40 miles an hour closer to uh, the ground, are having their power shut off. And it's because they're along the same power lines that also kind of make their way up the hills and into the mountains as well. So if you're along a power line where equipment could be compromised or knocked down, even if your area is not experiencing the strong winds, you should expect the possibility of power outages as well. Jeff, historically, the state's biggest fires are in October. What makes this month so dangerous? This is when the strongest cold fronts begin to come down from Canada. And so what we have right now is a big dip in the jet stream right there, uh, making its way down to the south, but not just to the south, also to the west. Now, this is called the Great Basin area. This is basically like desert area. So when you force this dry air across the mountain range, these really big mountains here, the Sierra Nevada, what happens is the wind goes up and over the hills and then kind of like throwing a boulder down down the hills. It just races down the mountains. And so you get these strong downslope wind that not only causes the winds to be stronger, it also dries the atmosphere out even more. In fact, right now, relative humidities in wine country north of San Francisco are five to 10 percent. That's how bone dry the atmosphere is. But you can see these winds accelerating down the hills. It's windy weather. It's dry weather. And by the way, it warms up the air as well. So it's kind of a triple whammy there. And this is typical of fall fronts. It's called a downslope wind in Northern California. It's a Diablo winds. And in Southern California, it is the Santa Ana winds. And today through this evening, we're going to continue to see wind gusts over hurricane force in the hills and the mountains and likely to 50 ish miles an hour when you get closer to the ground in the valleys. So Washington, Colorado, other parts um, out west, how are they doing? 
Yeah, so, you know, it, it's been a, an extreme weather event for a lot of folks. I mean, take a look at what's happening here in Colorado. Uh, Denver's picked up around six inches of snow. Boulder, closer to 10, some places close to 15 inches of snowfall. The mountains, one to two, two feet of snow. That's good for the fires. Not going to completely put them out, but at least it subdues them. That's good news. And now we have snow moving through Lubbock and Amarillo, Texas. It's October. This is really early for this. And this snow is making its way into Wichita, Kansas City. There's going to be an ice storm today and tomorrow in the panhandle of Texas and through central Oklahoma as well, an ice storm. So freezing rain, sleet, snow, everything mixed. Let's show you these temperatures, by the way, because uh, from today through tomorrow morning especially, even including Wednesday morning, but really the, the real core of the uh, cold air is today and tomorrow, 150 record lows are possible. This air, by the way, is coming directly south from the North Pole. Uh, you can actually check uh, on the computers to see where a certain air mass has originated. This one comes from the Arctic Ocean, just to give you an idea of where it came from. Uh, Boulder, three degrees tomorrow morning. That's the temperature. One degree in Colorado Springs. Hastings, uh, 10 degrees. Salt Lake City, 21. But by the way, wind chills tomorrow morning in um, Denver are going to be about 15 degrees below zero. And remember, it's October. So this, you know, winter is arriving with a vengeance, at least for a short, brief period of time, about a one and a half, two months early. Jeff, let's turn to the Gulf Coast now. Is Tropical Storm Zeta on track to strengthen into a hurricane before it makes landfall? So it's really close to being a hurricane already. Uh, winds are 70 miles an hour. The pressure is beginning to drop. You can see this big blob of thunderstorms right here. So this is going to continue to make its way northwest. We expect it will become a hurricane today, making landfall again. Remember, Delta did the exact same thing. This is the warmest water in this part of the hemisphere, by the way. This is where all the ocean heat content is. And it's going to make landfall around Cozumel and Cancun sometime tonight, tomorrow morning, then making its way into the Gulf of Mexico. It may weaken a bit over land, re-strengthen to a Cat 1 hurricane, maintain Cat 1 hurricane status until Wednesday afternoon, almost right before landfall. It looks like it'll probably come on shore as a strong tropical storm, but it may still be a low-end hurricane. You should prepare for that. That's going to happen Wednesday late in the day, Wednesday during the evening. And yeah, look at it again, Louisiana. We've had eight landfalls around the Gulf Coast so far this season alone. Eight landfalling storms already. So folks are weary, especially in Louisiana. But this could hit anywhere from central Louisiana all the way east to the panhandle of Florida, including Biloxi and Mobile and New Orleans as well. Uh, wind shear is going to kind of hit the system right before it makes landfall. That's why we think it may weaken a little bit. But... You know, you should always prepare for a storm one category higher than what is forecast. Just way to make sure you're prepared. Uh, and, and by the way, we're in an active pattern. So you might think to yourself, well, this has got to be the last storm. We can't possibly see another one. This is storm number 27, <laughs> by the way. 28 is the record in 2005. So we're only one away. We're about a month, a little more than a month ahead of record pace uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. 2005, we didn't see our 27th named storm until the end of November. Well, I got to tell you, computer models are showing in another eight to 10 days, we could see another tropical system form in this general area. And, um, you know, we're in a what we call a, a favorable pattern that makes its way across the Pacific into the Atlantic Ocean. And it's over us right now, and it's going to be with us another two to three weeks or so. So it could stay busy, believe it or not, even though we're heading into November. Jeez, man. Uh, Jeff, thanks a lot.